Okay, so earlier we had gone over our electrical equivalent circuit for the membrane with the capacitor, which is like the membrane that's charging up, and we have our resistor, which is like the channel, and our battery is the concentration difference. So let's change this from just focusing on one ion to focusing on all three. Good. And so, what are we going to do about the capacitor? If we're in steady state, do we have to worry about the capacitor? No, because the capacitor is just sort of how quickly things change. If things are changing yeah. in steady state, nothing is changing. So you could so, ignore that, and now right you're going to expand now, this. We're just focusing on that part. Now, why are you calling it G if you were just talking about a resistor? Um, because the conductance is the inverse of so resistance. Reciprocal, the reciprocal of resistance. Yeah. So, so it's another way of saying the same thing. Yeah. Good. Okay, so you expand GL into what three branches? Oh, well, again, the three major ions, so mm -hmm. our sodium, potassium, and chloride. Right. And each of these has its inherent potential. It's the driving force that's acting like the battery. Mm -hmm. It's going through the resistance, which is the channels. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the, um, the chloride is, because it's a negative ion, is, is reversed from the sodium and the potassium. Right. Now, to be a little bit careful, across that whole membrane, there is a voltage Vm. And the driving force is the difference between that overall Vm from here to here and each of the individual Nernst potentials. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so let's talk about currents. That's right. So if we have, we know that our membrane, membrane current, current should be the sum of the individual currents exactly. through this. So the sodium plus the potassium plus the chloride. And this is plus and not minus because the signs are going to work themselves exactly. out. Exactly. Okay. Now so it's in steady state. So what we can say, what can we say about the overall sum of all the currents? They should equal zero oh, because it's right. not changing. That's right. So we can put a zero on one side already, which is a big help. And then let's also split each of these into conductances and driving forces. That's right, because we had shown earlier from the electrical equivalent circuit that current is equal to conductance times driving force. And v minus E ion. Right, G ion and V ion. Exactly. And this is just Ohm's law. That's just, well, it's a it's version of Ohm's law. That's Ohm's right, law. it's actually Kirchhoff's law, but it's, it's, it's a version of Ohm's law. So we've got... First current, I sodium, becomes that. The second current, I potassium, becomes that. E potassium. And then the third current, the chloride current, becomes... And again, the signs will take care of themselves, so we're not going to worry about that. CDL. Good. Now some algebra. So we're going to solve for this... Vm. Yeah, so the voltage that the membrane is resting at. Exactly. So first I'm going to multiply through okay. by our uh, conductances. Okay. Uh, this is G sodium, very slanted. <laughs> B sodium plus G potassium. Mm -hmm. Whoops. <laughs> it's it's still true. Uh, yes, it's still true. Okay, and that's all equal to zero. All right. So we've got some negative things. Why don't we? Should we move them over to the other side so we can make our lives a little bit easier? Mm -hmm. All right. So all the negative terms are going to put on the left hand side. So it's so. going to be G sub, and it won't worry about pluses or minuses. G sodium, E sodium, plus G potassium, E potassium, plus G chloride, E chloride, equals, now on the right hand side we have G sodium Vm, plus G potassium Vm, plus G chloride e Vm, and we notice that there's a Vm, yeah, so we could factor that out. So let's just write that as Vm times the sum of G sodium 
plus G potassium plus G chloride. Oh, we're getting close to something nice here. We could divide everything by that, and we could end up with an equation for Vm. So let's see what happens if we do that. G sodium, E sodium, plus G potassium, E potassium, plus G chloride, E chloride, all divided by what was multiplying with Vm, G sodium, plus G potassium, plus G chloride. That's our electrical equivalent circuit uh, equation. It's like the Goldman-Hodgkin cats. Because mm -hmm. you've got the sort of weighted... It's a weighted average of the Nernst potential. Of so if the conductance to, say, potassium and chloride went to zero, what would happen? What would this reduce to? This would be just the... Well, this would be zero, this would be zero, this would be zero, this would be zero. So what happens is the GKEK and the G chloride, E chloride go to zero because the, the, the conductance is oh, zero. Chloride. On the bottom, the potassium chloride would also go to zero. And this would just be? G sodium, E sodium over G sodium. The G sodiums would cancel, and you're sitting at the equilibrium potential for sodium. I heard your eye on wrong. Yes. So that would make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And then we'd see that the rest potential is a weighted average of these different conductances. And similarly, the action potential is different weighted conductance of these different things. But we can say at the action potential we're going to be the G sodium is going to be very high, the conductance of sodium is high, mm -hmm. and then the resting potential, the conductance of potassium is very high, and that's what's going to dominate our weighted sum. Okay. Good.